I'm Dr. Susan Kirago Kanayo. I'm 39 years old. I'm married to my husband Victor Oku Kanayo. I don't have biological children. I have 71 children who I take care of as a non-biological mother. And because she has stood in the gap for others, beneficiaries bear witness to the power of one holding another's hand. Francis is the first in three generations in his family to go to high school thanks to children in freedom. My grandfather not, they did not proceed to high school. My father did not proceed to, my, to high school and I am the one who have proceeded to high school. No child should ever miss out on their dream because of finances. It's immoral. It's the worst thing that can happen to anybody. Can you imagine you yourself not ever have had a chance from birth? Her passion is fueled by the belief that each of us has a contribution to make a better future for Kenya. Our vision was to um, nurture a whole person, a total person, who can change this country, someone with integrity, someone with those values of accountability, someone who can critically think, um, you know, someone who has Ubuntu or citizenship, who loves their country, you know, just the, the kind of person this country needs to transform. And they were not getting it totally from their schools. So we decided to add value to what they receive in school. And that's when we uh, established a program called Mentorship for Freedom. Wasn't he in your school or yeah, Tomboya? Uhuru Park. This is the place where some of the beneficiaries of the Children in Freedom Scholarship Program gathered early this week. This is the beginning of a six-day mentorship program, courtesy of Dr. Susan and her husband. It is a journey that took us to Lukenya. What does it stand for? The fire that burns in her as she engages the students is evident. So, where did it all begin? I went to do my PhD in the University of Cambridge. Was offered a job there by the, by the university, which was, I was quite privileged and used to travel a lot and everything. But the, the, the work that took my heart were these poor girls in Kenya. What started as a Good Samaritan's good gesture would morph to an even bigger project that reaches out to needy children. We quit our jobs in the UK. Okay, my husband was a software engineer with uh, Hewlett Packard. Um, I was um, uh, working with the University of Cambridge. When we decided to take the risk to come back and not come back and look for jobs, there's a difference. You can come back and get even a better job than you had out there. But we said we'll come back and set up and just take one step at a time. And of course everyone thought we are crazy. Well, they have survived, the challenges notwithstanding. And I think the most critical thing for me, and to be honest, I find lacking in Kenya and maybe in other African countries, is that commitment for change. There's such a disconnect between, yap, 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 this is what we need to do, and doing it. The secret of success you who are not spending does not lie in what you see. The program depends on donations from well-wishers. Children in Freedom is funded 85% um, by Kenyans on the ground and in the diaspora. I'm so proud that we, um, our scholarship programs um, are, are owned by the people. Children in Freedom has partnered with schools in 16 counties in the country. And we, we pick not necessarily the brightest academically, but one who is thirsty to change the country. One who can um, um, articulate what they want this country uh, to be. So that kind of um, energy and spirit in a child really turns us on and we, we are like, okay, this is, this is a child that would really want to mold because once you mold that kind of firebrand, then they are able to go back to their communities and change 10 others, 100 others like that. The power of one. <laughs> With a PhD in education, Susan is passionate about raising a generation that can think critically, a generation that can question and innovate, a generation that can be self-reliant. For us, it's sustainable because of our mentorship. 
we, we not only mentor um, the children that we give scholarships, but we also mentor other children for a fee. We've been called to State House uh, for the, the People's uh, Reward Scheme, uh, which the First Lady is a patron. Uh, we've been called to mentor those children. We've, we've mentored also at Equity Foundation. Um, we've uh, mentored in schools. We've also, we also do corporate mentorship because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a program for all. For Dr. Susan, a thirsty mind will question, will innovate, a thirsty mind will critic, and that is what her scholarship beneficiaries benefit from when they attend mentorship retreats like the one underway in Lukenya. She'll teach these children to be innovative, to want to create, to think outside the box, and to be tired of a Kenya in Africa that is a consumer. We consume too much. You know, we, we drive foreign cars. I'm driving a German car. I keep telling them I want to drive a made in Kenya car, I want a made in Kenya laptop. I want it to be just normal to have made in Kenya or made in any other African country goods and for us to even um, uh, be able to export them outside there. And when I think of myself and the kids that we have, they are so great, they are clever, they are intelligent. We can do all things. They are often reminded that the sky is the limit and if they reach for it, then the future looks brighter. For Citizen Weekend, I am Anne Mawadeh.